Hey, thank you. Thank you for uh, joining me. Uh, we were out last week doing some shooting and uh, making a um, making a small television show. And that television show, we hope, will reach uh, PBS. We're doing um, a show called The American Mariner with uh, an episode in Los Angeles Harbor, which is really a fascinating uh, harbor, much more fascinating than people realize um, who actually live here in L.A. and probably travel past it every day. Uh, there is so much uh, rich history and amazing things going on there so filming became uh, became pretty easy for us to to get down there and get some shots and tell some really good stories but that'll be coming later in the year and we'll go from there I want to thank uh, Paulette McWilliams for singing our our opening offshore um, she doesn't get enough credit for how beautiful that really is the next thing I want to do is since we took a week off, I've been doing some thinking about um, a sailor's point of view. And a sailor's point of view, as, as many of you know who follow the podcast, I think is a very unique, special, and influential point of view. And it's something that uh, has permeated throughout culture and societies and literature and film, of course. Um, the view of the sailor comes from a particular uh, physicality that he goes through, a particular uh, mental uh, preparation that he goes through. So I was thinking about this, and I decided to, because I had been really slammed with uh, doing everything else, I thought maybe I'd write a essay on the sailor's point of view. And here goes. The Sailor's Point of View. Oceanic travel by passenger ship um, began ending when Pan Am Airlines announced uh, regular transatlantic flights in 1945. Travel by plane changed the very essence of the traveler's psychology and the fundamental experience of a different place. We travel to learn and grow. Curiosity drives our quest to see the next port, to look around the bend, to climb to the mountaintop and sail to the edge of the horizon. Our travel experience informs our understanding of our place on earth and our relationship of places in ourselves. Traveling provides a contrast to our normal. A different place makes this place, your place, your home, more understandable. How we get there and how we prepare the experience of our travel has fundamentally changed because flying is open to everyone and it takes less time. We've lost the benefits of preparation and thus lost the ability to comprehend the nuanced aspects of travel, both interior and exterior. With air travel, we no longer wait in a heightened sense of anticipation over discovering that distant place. Honestly, the wait is about discovering that far-off place in your soul. No long evenings on the deck of a massive ship watching sunrises and sunsets where the only entertainment is playing shuffleboard, conversing with fellow travelers to glean inside information about the best restaurants, reliable drivers, clean hotels, crime, shopping, history, and a variety of other subjects needing to grasp the contours of a new place. Our vanity 
demands a world-weary appearance to cover our innocence. As if they'll sanction us for our lack of experience. Air travel excluded these long periods of this wonderful, anxious, sumptuous anticipation. Waiting is something we sailors do as we have no choice given the speed at which we travel. Some travelers are pressed for time, limited by funds, limited by vacation time from work, wanting to skip the first big step and get to the heart of the vacation. The casual traveler wants to be transported from his comfortable chair at home to the steps of the Roman Colosseum as seamlessly as changing channels on their flat screen TV. No sweat, no hassle, no experience. Seen it, ate it, hiked it, slept in it. That will do. Thank you very much. But I've got to be back at work tomorrow. The experience of a place is washed away within the days of returning home, leaving little or no impression of that place on their minds or, more importantly, their soul. What is the point of travel if you're not willing to be fashioned by the place even a little? Sailing to a place involves an entirely different psychological and physical dynamic for the earnest and the open traveler slash sailor. Passenger ships and cruise ships offer a hint of the maritime experience. The modern cruise ship experience has been so honed to entertaining the passive traveler, it is hard to see how getting off a ship at a port of call has anything to do with the authentic experience of travel, other than to pry dollars from your hands for trinkets. Trinkets you use as a reminder of having been there. There is no dynamic experience, no moment of realization, no conversation with your soul or reminders of your place in the continuum of humanity. You're left with sad little trinkets and a reminder of a lost opportunity. Sailing is a physical and mind-altering experience of dimensions rarely understood even by local sailors. Lauded through time, as sailors' experience informed the homebound, travel changed their being. Regardless of of education or age, they wore their foreign experience like so many tattoos, a traveling corporeal pictographic. The sailor is a portal to the world. What I'm describing is very real, but largely forgotten. Travel by sail is a unique experience that prepares you in wonderful ways to enter a world unfamiliar in in culture and language and custom, yet to find an honest kinship with the inhabitants because of your confident awareness. The physical and emotional preparations inherent in sailing across the ocean make you different plainly different. A sailor's point of view was once a common entity that allowed you to see the world and be in the world at once with a sublime understanding. The sailor's experiences, the history, the people and their customs, their art, their industry, their desires, likes and loves, all become vividly apparent as the sailor immerses himself or herself in the sea of life. I am a sailor, and I've been telling these stories, large and small, from a sailor's point of view. But what is this sailor's point of view? How does one achieve that awareness and perception? Sailing slows the perception of time allowing the mind to be in the present tense. There's nothing a sailor can do about the past, and the future is just a waypoint in the distance. He is obligated to be in the present and face whatever tasks the boat and ocean throw at him or her. Time is experienced in the way most people who farm 
which was just about everyone on earth in the past, distance determines time. Plow that field from dawn to dusk, and that was your measurement of a day. One's awareness of distance traveled is heightened. An example, modern example might be the mind-bending phenomenon of when it snows. Driving to work takes less than 20 minutes at 60 miles per hour on a dry day. You perceive it as 20 minutes, the distance. It snows, and you suddenly are creeping along at 20 miles per hour, and two very slow hours pass. At this point, you realize distance as another measurement of time. Sailing obliterates your sense of time much the same way. This wonderful state of simply being, the body experiences something akin to like 24-7 yoga. The body adjusts to the rolling deck, swinging back and forth until it becomes second nature or as I like to say, the original nature. It must be a type of experience similar to being in the womb. At this point in your voyage, you have attained a degree of preparation. Mentally, you are very much present. Physically, your body has been transformed into feeling fluid and aware. You're ready to experience a new place with heightened senses, acute awareness. You are a sailor. Again, thank you for listening. Um, We're really happy to uh, bring you this podcast. We would love if uh, you would review us and uh, write a comment. Uh, You can do that if you're listening to it on Apple or iTunes. Um, A couple of the other things, Podchaser also accepts um, comments. I really would appreciate that. You could also follow us on Offshore Explorer on Facebook. Um, You can find us there. Um, I post a lot of different pictures and Little things, this, that, and the other thing. So that kind of works out for us. Um, On the money-raising side, please support our um, sponsors, um, Healy Henson, beautiful equipment, and Scuba Pro, a couple of other little small ones that are coming and going. Um, But mostly, if you would like to buy us a coffee, you can do that at... um, um, the coffee, and you'll find the uh, link um, on our website, uh, which is offshoreexplore.org. Um, you can also catch up on some of the uh, older uh, episodes, and um, we really, really appreciate you uh, being a part of the sailing family. Next week, I'm going to dive into really kind of a longer series um, I'm going to talk about the the kind of stuff that happens when um, you want to get involved in in, 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 in boating how that starts uh, what to do um, you know the whole thing is is getting experience and experience is, can be hard to get but there are a few tried and true ways that you can get on a boat and I'm going to spend some time talking about them I'm going to spend some time talking about the maintenance and how that can happen. Buying a boat, building a boat. It's a whole series about how one finds their place in our world of sailing and boating. All right. Thank you very much. And we'll see you next week.